After spending a few days in Vilnius, I decided to head to the train station and get the next train to Lithuania's second largest city, Kaunas. The train runs once every hour and takes about an hour and 10 minutes. The ticket for the second class train car cost 5 euros and 60 cents or about 6 dollars and 60 cents. It was a very clean train with plenty of seats and a somewhat scenic hour journey through the Lithuanian countryside. Welcome to Kaunas. This is the second largest city in Lithuania and I'm excited to explore it for the next two days. It's about 1.30. Just popped into the supermarket to get some stuff to make a little picnic. Excited to try some of the local delights. I'll show you once I get to a park. It's quite loud on this main road, but I'm walking from the uh, train station into the center of town where there's like a nice tree-lined street. Should be a nice place to have a little picnic. Konas is located in south-central Lithuania, about an hour and a half from Vilnius, and about two hours from the coastal city of Klaipeda. The walk from the train station to the downtown area takes about 10 or 15 minutes, and as soon as you turn towards the church of St. Michael the Archangel, it announces itself. I couldn't help but notice it during my entire trip to Konas. It seemed to always be peeking out between the trees. This Byzantine-style church was built between 1891 and 1895, when Kaunas was part of the Russian Empire. It was originally a Russian Orthodox church when it was completed, but it is now a Roman Catholic church. The church also marks the start of a pedestrian street that runs the entire length of the city, leading almost all the way to the river's edge. Found this nice spot along the river. Lots of people just setting up having little picnics and uh, this feels like peak backpacker mode with like a loaf of bread and like accoutrement but um, mostly it's because I can't eat out for every meal anymore like 33 and I need to <laughs> eat a little healthier although I don't know that like dried sausage pate and herring salad with beetroot sounds very delicious I'm very excited about it is particularly healthy but that's what we're gonna have. Enjoy the view, enjoy the shade, and then I can finally check into my Airbnb and maybe take a shower. <laughs> also, if you're wondering how I'm gonna eat all of this, fear not. Never travel without your Swiss Army knife. It's invaluable. I've had some of this brown, like, uh, multi bread before. It's only just since being here in the last couple of days, and um, they're, it's all like really dense. None of the bread is like airy and light. Um, so it's really kind of nice to like have. I'm like, looking forward to be able to toast it at my Airbnb uh, because it just it has like such a nice texture. It's a little bit sweeter than like other sort of brown breads that I've had in the past. Uh, almost like molasses -y. Uh Yeah, it's really, really nice. It's really crusty on the outside. And uh, like, even though the bread is dense, it's still really chewy. It's fantastic. It's, it's a very delicious bread, if you like bread. After having some lunch, I headed over to my Airbnb, which was located right near the pedestrian street in the center of the city. A little mini apartment that felt like it was almost brand new, with a huge bed, a little couch and seating area, a kitchenette with a few different things to use for preparing food and drinks, plus a fridge. It had a nice sized TV with local cable channels, a nice clean bathroom. After unpacking a little bit, I got out to explore Kaunas. This place is so cute. I'll link it below. I booked it through Airbnb. It's, uh, yeah, it's got everything I need. It's got a little fridge, I think. Uh, coffee and tea kettle, water, microwave, bathroom, nice big bed. Um, and it just cost $35 a night, I believe. So, bargain. Right in the middle of town, only a block away from that main pedestrian street where all the trees are and stuff. Oh, excited to just take this backpack off now. I started with the beautiful tree-lined street called Lysvis. In addition to being a great place to walk, sit on a park bench, or ride a bike or scooter, the street is packed with cafes and restaurants, little bars, and cute shops. 
I followed the road to the historical presidential palace where I walked around the park and peeked inside, but it was already closed for the day by the time I got there. You might be wondering why there's a presidential palace in a city that isn't the capital. Well, from 1920 to 1939, Kaunas was actually the capital of Lithuania because Vilnius had been seized by Poland. I carried on heading for the waterfront where the two rivers that run on either side of the city, the Neris and the Neman, meet. But before you meet the river, you come to the Kaunas Castle. Kaunas Castle is a medieval castle that was originally built in the mid 14th century. However, at the beginning of the 21st century, only about one third of the castle still remained. The castle you see now was majorly reconstructed in 2010 and 2011, and now it has a branch of the Kaunas City Museum inside. I can't stop taking photos. It's a castle, a real castle. It's so beautiful here. This river is so fast moving and there are people swimming in it. I'm not sure if that seems safe, but I guess it's pretty shallow because they're sort of standing up and stuff, but it's pretty fast moving. This is the point where the two rivers that come around the city meet. Uh, so I'm gonna head to the end and I guess, I don't know. Is it like when two oceans meet, do they collide? <laughs> It's so beautiful out here. Imagine if you like this was your jog. You just come jog around Carolina's Castle. Amazing. There's also a bunch of these things around. I was like, oh, who's who's driving their car? Their remote control cars. They're their lawnmowers. There's a bunch of them just doing their thing. All around. From the castle, I followed the path to the edge of the park, where the two rivers meet. After that, I headed back towards the old town, where there is a beautiful plaza with a town hall building and lots of restaurants surrounding it. Then I walked past the cathedral, Countess St. Peter and Paul Cathedral Basilica. Unfortunately, it was closed, but I've read that the interior of the church is incredibly ornate. On the way back to my hotel, I stopped to admire some of the city's street art. I have absolutely loved Kaunas. I highly recommend it as a city. This was really just like a recon mission to, uh, to get the lay of the land a little bit, see how easy or difficult it was gonna be to get here on public transport. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to come back and explore and go into most of the museums. The museums are really fascinating. There's a lot to explore about the history, but also the art. Kaunas itself feels like a younger, hipper version of, of Vilnius. It has a little bit more of like a second city vibe, like like Melbourne in Australia or, or Guadalajara, right? Like it's, it doesn't have the pressure of being the capital and uh, it shows. It's very cool. Definitely be back here. Highly recommend it. If you have any questions about it, uh, let me know in the comments below um, and I will see you next time. Bye.